In this section of our HTRAC tutorial, you will learn how to set up worksites, preset spreading settings in the HTRAC portal, and assign those to your StrikeSmart controller so your machine will automatically keep track and execute the mission according to your preset strategy. Let's get into it. Once you are logged into your HTRAC account, look for the Get Started square and click on the Setup Worksite button. This will lead you directly to the main worksite setup wizard. We'll start from the top by naming the worksite in the New Worksite Data field. There is no requirement when it comes to the name itself, but you should always try to use a descriptive name. The next step is to create a customer. Click on the Add New button and enter your customer information in the data fields labeled Customer Name, ID Number, and Mark Reference. The ID number is not required, but if you have an internal ID number for the customer, it is useful to add it here. The Mark Reference Data field is for your use internally and can refer to a contract number, purchase order number, geographic location, or any other useful bit of information that applies to your customer. When finished, click on the Save button. As customers are added to your HTRAC database, they will appear on the list under the Customer tab. When you have finished entering customer information, the next step is to create a new contract. Simply click the Add New button and enter a name for this contract in the New Contract Data field. We recommend using a descriptive name for the contract. For example, you could name it Season 2021-2022, or why not the order number, such as Contract Number 12345. Here, again, the Mark Reference Data field is for your use internally and can be used to distinguish the contract in a meaningful fashion. For example, South Parking Lot or Lot Number 1. The next step is to enter the physical address and postal code for the site you will create. This information is used in the mapping portion of the worksite creation. The description box is used for internal use and is very useful in noting details about the worksite that will be helpful to your operators when they arrive on the site. Now that we have a customer and a contract entered, the next step is to establish a spreading setting for the worksite you will create. A spreading setting is what HTRAC uses to dictate what your StrikeSmart controller does once it arrives at a client's property and is the two-way GPRS communication channel that allows changes on the StrikeSmart controller from a remote device. Start by clicking on the Add New button, then assign a name to the spreading setting in the Spreading Setting box. Next, click on the Selected Material menu and select the correct material from the list. If you select Custom, Mix, Liquid, or Liquid 2, I highly recommend that you make a note of what materials comprise those selections so you can keep better track of your material expenses. Wet salt, in this case, refers to a high moisture content salt. Once a material is selected, enter a numeric value under the Quantity column. This numeric value represents the amount of material you want to spread. Moving to the right, click the box under the Extended column to enable option functionality. Next, select the mode from the pull-down menu that you want the unit operating in when it arrives on site. If you select Auto, the StrikeSmart controller will default to ground speed control. This means that the unit will operate completely according to the movements of the vehicle. If you select Manual mode, the operator will have to manually operate the unit by the StrikeSmart controller. It is highly recommended that you select automatic mode for all spreading settings to ensure optimal material efficiency as well as maximizing labor efficiency and the quality of the end result. The next data field is width. Enter a numeric value in the data field to control the width of the spreading pattern. Finally, you will see four icons to the right of the width column which are labeled work light, beacon, automatic vibration, and pre-wet. If you click on any of the icons, they will switch color between red and green. All options set to green will automatically be activated when the operator arrives on site. You can change these at any time simply by clicking on the icon to activate or deactivate the option. Users can change any part of a spreading setting at any time, but must click the Save button in order for these changes to be successfully transmitted to the StrikeSmart controller via a GPRS link. 
Now let's move on to the last and probably most interesting phase, which is the geofencing phase. Start by clicking the Add button found in the Areas column and begin the process of geofencing your worksite. It is advisable that you select the satellite view on the map in the upper left hand corner of the map screen. This will give you a better visualization of the surface area you intend to geofence. Position your cursor anywhere on the map and click once. Three small round markers will appear on the map. With your mouse, position your cursor over one of the markers, then drag the marker anywhere on the map by holding it with the left mouse button. Repeat this process until all your markers are positioned on the site you intend to treat. You will notice that as you move these markers around the map, additional markers will appear to give you greater flexibility in defining the area being created. Click on the Done button in the small gray box above the map screen when you are done with geofencing and would like to lock the area. The total area and amount of material will appear above the map in the Total column. The unit of measurement will be shown according to your HTRAC account settings, metric or imperial. Geofenced areas can be edited at any time simply by clicking on the Edit button. Make any necessary changes on the map and click the Done button when finished. It is also worth mentioning that you can adjust the spreading settings for any worksite at any time by simply clicking on the Spreading Settings pull-down menu. The total amount of material required, which will be shown in the Total Data field, will update automatically according to the selected spreading setting. Be sure to save your work before leaving the page. At this stage, turn on your StrikeSmart controller and confirm that the data entered into your online HTRAC database has successfully reached the controller. This is done manually by clicking the HTRAC button found in the upper right hand corner. Click Select a nearby worksite and look for the new worksite you just created. Congratulations! You have successfully created a geofenced worksite which has been successfully recognized by your StrikeSmart controller. Once the operator arrives on site, your StrikeSmart controller will recognize the worksite and you will be notified regarding the application rate which has been transmitted to the StrikeSmart controller for this specific worksite. Press the start button and you are good to go. Now please sit back and relax while your Hilltip machine does the hard work.